<laughs> Tonight will be a little PowerPoint and a little uh, bit of looking at internet sites. And what I wanted to do was to share with you um, and actually use some of the sites together and so that you could get an idea, are these things that I might take advantage of or not? Because um, there's a lot of good stuff out on the internet if you look for it. But I know for most of us, um, we're not maybe interested in going down that road or we do what we do, we haven't looked around, whatever it might be. So hopefully you'll find, find these interesting. Um, so I'll go ahead and screen share the PowerPoint, a whole other story. But so I wanted to answer that question, why have a daily prayer practice one more time? I know Rob talked about it at the end of his presentation last week. I had the opportunity yesterday to uh, listen to the presiding bishop uh, on a Zoom call with the Alumni Association at Hobart William Smith. And they were talking about his latest book. And so in order to feel like I was up to speed, I actually bought the book, which I had ignored. And I'll tell you why later, but it's a fabulous book if you haven't, haven't looked at it yet. And he had this sentence. So, so the structure of the book is responding to questions. So we know he became a rock star after the Harry and Meghan wedding. And um, people stop him here, there, and everywhere. And he does a lot of Zoom presentations. And so he's taken the, the questions that he gets asked and responds to them in, um, in this book form. And so one of the things that I thought was really intriguing was this paragraph from chapter four, I think. But why should, my question, why should we have a daily prayer practice? And he is saying, imagine if you will, the impact of each and every person on this planet taking the time to define and then live out loving principles. In fact, imagine 50% of everybody doing this and being successful even half the time. Politics, business and commerce, religious life and community would be transformed. Um, and I just thought that was such a powerful, given the reality now of people in the streets and and the lawsuits and all of the things, the chaos that's going on in our world today. Uh, this really struck me as something that, that, um, that would be a benefit. And so how do I do my part? And I think, how do you live in this loving way? And the whole book is filled with um, is prayer. It's really prayer, praying every day, being engaged with with God. So I, I liked that as kind of an entry and an entry point for prayer. So two of the prayer resources that we'll actually participate in tonight, one is Pray As You Go, and the other one are programs at the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Pray As You Go is Jesuit. It comes from the Jesuit Society in the UK. So everyone has a lovely British accent. It's really quite wonderful. And, um, and the Society of St. John the Evangelist is an Episcopalian um, monastery in Boston in Cambridge, uh, the first Anglican man monastery uh, in this country. Um, and so the, the URL for the website is literally prayasyougo.org. And then I pressed on, um, let me see if I can go back. So here's what it looks like when you, when you enter with the week's calendar. This runs as an app. So I actually look at it on my iPad and I get up in the morning, I make coffee first, and then I sit in my prayer chair and I start the morning with this. Now I've chosen the Monday 
uh, recording because it, I'll pause it a moment, because every once in a while they do a program where they walk you through this prayer of the imagination that Rob talked about last week. And so uh, they happen to have done that on Monday. Now, what I'm going to do though, these run anywhere from 10 minutes to 13 minutes, always starts with some nice music, um, but I'm going to short change that music a little bit for sake of time this evening. Um, so it will run about 10 minutes. Uh, so we'll, I will go ahead and do that. One way of praying is to imagine yourself in a scene from the Bible or in God's presence and then taking part in it. It is a way of allowing God to speak to you through your imagination. Today you will be guided through an imaginative contemplation exercise. So, how do you imagine the scene as you hear today's reading from the Gospel of Luke? As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside, begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people, when they saw it, praised God. Jesus is approaching Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd. Who are you in the scene? A disciple? A member of the crowd? Or perhaps the blind man himself? What can you hear? The sounds of those around you in the crowd?
What can you see around you as you approach Jericho? Picture the ground you are walking on. The faces of those around you. When the blind beggar hears that Jesus is so near, in his pain and suffering he cries out to Jesus. How do you experience this cry? Can you hear it easily over the sound of the crowd? Some of those following Jesus resent this disturbance and tell the man to be quiet, to suffer in silence. But imagine the moment that the blind man's cries stop Jesus in his tracks and he tells the crowd to minister to this blind man by calling him over. How does Jesus do this? Notice his gestures, the tone of his voice. What do you want me to do for you? What stirs in you as you hear Jesus ask these words? Lord, let me see again. Watch now as the man receives his sight. Imagine the emotion spreading across his face as he realizes he has been healed. The blind man uses his new sight to follow Jesus along the road. The blind man believed in a God who pays attention. Why bother screaming if you believe no one is there to pay attention? The blind man focuses on Jesus, and Jesus saw him. Where is your focus today? What do you want Jesus to do for you? Turn your eyes on Jesus now. You might like to talk to him as one friend speaks to another. Or you might even want to cry out to him today, as the blind man.
Glory be to the Father, and, and to the Son, Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever shall, shall be, world without end. Amen. So that's how I begin my morning. Thoughts? Nancy, do they always have you go into a, like a, a reading and put yourself into it? That's, that's the structure every day. Well, it's usually not that formulated. It usually as they read the scripture, they uh, prompt you, there's more silence. They prompt you with a few questions to think about. They read the scripture a second time and then, and then they close. Okay. So um, the music changes. Sometimes um, there's the black, Mandaba, something I can't think of the name of the group, but anyway, an African group, classical music, the mm -hmm. flutey kind of stuff, you know, it's a little bit of everything in terms of the beginning music, but I find it sort of quiets me down. And then you're reading a small amount of scripture every day. And I don't have, I open my iPad, I push the button. <laughs> I don't need two books. I don't need any of that. <laughs> so I don't know. So it seemed like something you might try or. Nancy, is it, is it, oh, I'm sorry, Kitty, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, um, I found myself not thinking about the process at all. I got so involved in the in the imaginative part because I enjoy that that whole thing very much, and so I closed my eyes and was into it all the way through. You know, so uh, I didn't think about the process. <laughs> so I don't have any comments on the process. <laughs> anyway, Rob, you were going to say something. I'm going to sneeze. I think. Okay. <laughs> Kazutai. Yeah, I know, right? It's that I could, I, I, I could, I could feel it start, and then I knew as it started that Nancy was going to ask me if I wanted to say something at that moment. <laughs> so no, I'm okay now. I fought it off. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, is it an uh, is it an app? Can you download? Um, it, it, so it's downloadable. So you, I mean, I can put this on my phone and take the dog for a walk or something, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. See, I like that idea. I used to listen to um, morning prayer, a morning prayer podcast. It was from a priest in, um, I, I don't know, Maryland or something. He, um, one of those other states. Um, and he, um, uh, and so he read morning prayer, uh, you know, just right through for the prayer. I mean, according to the prayer book, um, but it was the same thing. It had some cheesy music in the background. Um, at times and and he went through different you know, that was really nice and it was about 30 minutes so it was good for you know if you're taking a walk or something it was good to um good to listen to so i was just curious because that feels like that's a nice way to kind of start yeah just start start the day um yep. so the app is pray as you go pray as you go dot com dot org dot org yeah, and they're Jesuits. Um, you know, there was a time when I first I joined that against them. the Episcopal Church that I worried because I wasn't reading the right scripture. <laughs> uh, because while we match up on Sunday, we don't match up during the week. And so I was thinking, oh, oh I'm reading different scripture. That's not good. I, not a good Episcopalian. <laughs> then uh, it came to me that uh, God doesn't really care. <laughs> so, I think he forgives you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think whatever you're doing in terms of prayer is probably good with him. 
So anyway, so that's my first one. The second one I wanted to share is from the Society of St. John the Evangelist. And I think I've said this to you before, but they, uh, they created um, kind of a mission for themselves to create Lenten meditations on the internet. And um, so each year they do a six week program on something. And the beauty of them is that they keep all of their older programs online. So you can go back and look at um, and actually do things that they've done in prior years. So I've gone through a bunch. Um, the beauty of these guys is it's about three minutes, which is maybe the right amount of time for some people. <laughs> and, um, and so they have a theme. You can choose whatever uh, sort of course, if you will, you want to look at. And, um, and you can sign up. So they send you an email every day and you click on that email and it takes you to a little video of one of the brothers talking about whatever the topic of the day is. And the thing I really like about it is they always leave you with a question that, um, that I can kind of think about throughout the day. So, so let me show you that. I'll show you the website and then uh, we'll just listen to one three minute thing. So here is their web website. It's ssje.org. Um, I highly recommend they do Compline services. And I know we're probably competing with what Rob is doing, but um, they're very nice services. There's sort of a, we scroll through, there's news, Emory House is their retreat center. Um, they also do something called word of the day. So you can get an email from them and it's something to think about. Uh, they have their sermons online. And as we scroll down, now we get to the section of these six week programs. So I discovered these guys because I wanted to do a rule of life. So this growing a rule of life, the green one, I don't know if you see my cursor moving, but um, the growing a role of life uh, I did with a couple of people and it was actually a great program. One of the beauties of these guys is they work with Virginia Theological Seminary to set up workbooks for each of these courses. And so when you go into the course, you can actually download that workbook and, and actually work through in the same way that they're recommending or what I do at this point is I just listen to the, to the video and think about the question. So what I'm working on right now is this five marks of love. So you click on that and you come to a screen. Each of these is set up the same. You can put in your email address and your name and what date you'd like to start. And then once you start every day, they send you a link to the video. Um, I come to this section, you can download the workbook here if you chose to go down that road. And I think it would be beneficial. Rob and I have talked a little bit about maybe getting a group together to work through um, whatever they'll be coming up with for Lent. Um, but let's see. So I'm going to go, so close your eyes a little bit. I don't want to make you dizzy, but I'm just going to go down. You wouldn't normally do this because you're going to be clicking on that email that you get every day. Um, here's the one. So I found this one. So what they're talking about in the five marks of love is evangelism, mission, outreach, those sorts of topics. And um, this brother is talking about the need for community. And I thought, what a good topic for us right now. So I'll just um, cue him up.
We cannot do this alone. You cannot do this alone. We need one another. Uh, the metaphor that's used in the epistles uh, about our being followers of Jesus is that we're members of a body. Uh, the fact that not everyone is a head or not everyone is a heart or not everyone is a foot or, uh, or a kidney doesn't mean that they're not essential. We all need one another and we belong to one another. And so when the disciples ask Jesus how to pray, Jesus uh, leaves us with what we call the Lord's Prayer. And you know, it's, it's plural. Uh, Our Father who art in heaven, give us, forgive us. It's presuming that we belong to one another, that we are partnered with one another, uh, that we need one another. And this is easier to imagine with some people uh, than with others. And yet, I think what is oftentimes true is that what could appear to us uh, as a stain on someone else, uh, something that we might find uh, repelling or might, what might elicit our judgment, is probably not, not a stain, it's probably a scar that, they have, uh, that they've won well, and that we would be greatly moved if we learned more about them, um, more about people whom we find are different. Maybe, uh, maybe even repelling. Uh, there's a, a fascinating word that's used in the letter to the Hebrews, uh, and that is uh, the word for the love of strangers, philonexia. Uh, it's exactly the opposite of xenophobia, which is being afraid of strangers or put off by strangers. The letter to the Hebrews uh, says uh, uh, this reminder to love the brothers or sisters and do not forget the stranger because there's no strangers to Jesus. My suggestion to you is to reflect on why is it that you are a follower of Jesus? What is at the core of the gospel for you? Remember, gospel is good news. So what is good? What is good that is compelling and it's transformative in your life? And then what is news? News is different than old's. What is, what is news? How is God uh, coming to you, meeting you, inviting you, serving you, serving through you to others? Uh, if someone were to ask you, uh, what is the core of the gospel? Could you give them an answer in, let's say, three sentences, uh, which would be demonstrated both by your lips, what you say, and by your life, what you do? So a very different kind of flavor, um, but a challenging question. So every day you get this kind of little um, set of thoughts and, and then you're left with this question that can kind of come up for you throughout the day. So there's something about the bell ringing in the front and the back of that, vi that video as well that reminds me of Sunday morning, I think. There's just something comforting for me about that whole, whole uh, package. So, and they're real Episcopalians, so it, we're not <laughs> going out into the woods somewhere for somebody else. So that's the second thing I listen to in the morning, and then I, and then I do something else, but um, it, when I first get up in the morning, I guess I'm not that motivated and, but I like to do it first thing because otherwise I start working on things and the day's gone by and I haven't done anything. So I wanna make it just as easy as I can. And that's why I thought, well, let's just take the time and look at these videos and give you an idea um, of what, what is there. So I have a couple other things on uh, the slides. And so a couple of other things that I found in, in preparing this is VTS, so Virginia Theological Seminary, has had for a number of years, actually, this idea of an Advent word. If you're on Facebook, uh, Rob has participated in this with Winston uh, a couple of times, but they now have a podcast. So I don't know, when we come back together face-to-face. -face. I'll talk a little bit about podcasts, but 
you can uh, sign up for this podcast on your favorite podcast player. And it's a two minute meditation every morning uh, throughout the Advent season. So with Advent coming up, I thought that might be a good thing to think about. The other thing they've, um, they've put together is on Spotify, which may, may not be something you're familiar with, but it's, um, you know, it's a music playing app, um, but they put together uh, a series of Advent music pieces. So there's not a Christmas carol in there. Um, if you went to the Faith in the World when Scott Gunn was here, he talked about not allowing people at Forward Movement to play Christmas music prior to Christmas Eve. So VTS has created this playlist for all Advent music, and it's a little bit of everything. Um, it's kind of, it's pretty interesting. And then another kind of prayer that comes up is centering prayer. And here's a link to the contemplativeoutreach.org. And I haven't put a lot of time into that. Centering prayer is pretty much sitting in silence for 20 minutes, a half an hour minimum. And so, um, but they have plenty of introductory material on that website, if that were something you might be interested in. And then the last thing on the list is a, an Advent meditation book from Forward Movement called Waiting and Watching. And um, we've ordered these books and we're trying to figure out how to have people who are interested pick one up. Um, so more on that when we get our hands on them. But I'm thinking of maybe a morning or two or a morning and an afternoon of being available at the church and we could have a drive through. You could just drive through and I'll run out and throw a book in your car, um, that kind of thing. So keep an eye out for that as well. And then lastly, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes, uh, again, VTS um, create, created a document and you can find it on their website, but the way they've done their links, it's harder to show the URL than, than just going there. If you look at the bottom in the fine print, um, buildfaith.org slash, and then a bunch of stuff, what I plan to do is send you guys a PDF of these slides. So then you could just click on that link and go to it. Um, but, and they're writing this on one of their groups that is really more about family prayer. Um, and so in the beginning sanctifying space reminds everyone in the household. Well, some of us, there's only one of us in the household but I like the second sentence. When you create a prayer space in your home, you are reminded of God's presence at all times while also making a connection between church and home. And I like that because Rob talked about um, the daily prayer practice at home is a way of connecting your church practice with your, um, with your home practice. And they're talking about what are the things that you might have in it. Um, and they're the things that you would think, you know, a candle, et cetera. They're going on about um, maybe you wanna do colors of the season to change it up a little bit. And then I know what a number of people do is that last paragraph to have a bowl or a basket where you can put prayer intentions in the basket and during your prayer time, you can pick that up and pray through your prayer intentions. I like that idea. I don't have one right now, but maybe. And, and I wanted to show you, this is my prayer space. Notice I lit the candle, I lit the little lamp and I have a, a lot of books and a plant, but my chair, I sit in the chair and I'm looking out my big windy window patio doors looking at the trees across the way um, and that's where I go with my cup of coffee in the morning and listen 
and, um, and pray, do my prayer practice. So I thought if I'm going to talk a good game, I should demonstrate <laughs> that I have it in my one bedroom apartment. So you don't need an extra room. You don't need all of that. You just need a corner of your living room in my case and uh, where you can sit down and your body says, oh, you do something different here which I think is, uh, I think is a good thing. So, so again, my plan is to make a PDF of this so you don't need special software to look at it and you'll have all the links that we've looked at. And, um, you know, and there are a ton of others like the Jesuits in Ireland do something called sacred space which uh, can, you can get as a recording. It's not quite the same. Um, there is an app for that, but it's reading it. Um, I didn't include, you know, forward day by day, forward movement, um, which has the reading from the paper book. And then at the bottom in the middle, you click on prayer and you can choose morning, midday, evening prayer. And it puts all the scripture and everything that you need together. Um, the one that Rob talks about is, I think, St. Clair, Rob. I think you do a couple. Mission St. Clair, yeah, is, is one of the ones, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the one that others, because they actually have hymns, so it's optional, but you can click a button and, um, and it will actually, somebody will sing a hymn, a recording of a hymn. And then one that we talked about at one point that I've actually used in midday prayer or noonday prayer is Venite or Venite as other people say, V-E-N-I-T-E. -E. Mm -hmm. And that's an app on the phone and a number of options. You can do write one or write two. You can include silence or not. Um, I, li I like that app as well. Uh, so, so my point in all this is you can make it be easy. It isn't something that you need to um, get a thousand books and have to look everything up and figure it all out. There are things that can kind of get you into the idea of doing a daily prayer practice that are, um, that are so straightforward, you really can't argue it takes too much time. <laughs> And I think it's like any, you know, all of the research on habit building says start with something really tiny, tiny habits. BJ Fogg, F-O-G-G, -G, uh, did a lot of research on how do you build new habits and you build them by linking them to something else like making my coffee and, uh, and then doing something very simple that you add to that listening to a, a, a video. So then on another day, we should talk about podcasts. <laughs> and uh, you, I'll just go send that email now. So <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Nancy. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Rob. All right. Thanks, Nancy. Sorry, it was late.